Last week, we heard from three Albuquerque High School students who walked out of their school to protest the park test. The test has sparked heated debate across the state, and we continue to cover the issue here on New Mexico in Focus. This week, producer Sarah Gustavus sat down with Education Secretary Hannah Scandera to hear what she had to say about the protest and how the administration of Governor Martinez aims to address education priorities in the coming years. Secretary Scandera, thanks for sitting down with us today. Absolutely. So in the past few weeks, students have been protesting the park exam. We had three on our show last week. They talked about their concerns, how much time they're spending on the test, how it's evaluating them and their teachers. What do you want those students to hear from you this week? I think every student's voice matters. And in fact, I've reached out to the superintendents where districts have had some students uh, protesting and have offered to meet with students after. Um, after the testing window for park finishes. More than anything, I, first I think we have to focus on there are about 230,000 students who are taking the park assessment and they're in their classrooms engaging and they invariably, as they're walking out, what are they saying? It's, it's easier than I thought, it's going quicker than I thought, and really optimistic comments. So making sure we have accurate information in the hands of our students, our parents, so Let's hit rewind. What, what does that mean? What's, what would accurate information be? Well, first of all, we're replacing an old test. And why are we doing that? We've heard from parents across the state, teachers as well, saying we don't want fill in the bubble, memorize the facts, test. We want critical thinking. We want to know our kids can do real world, world problem solving. Our employers, in fact, are saying our kids aren't graduating from high school ready to pro problem solve and, and critically think in their, in their workplace or on into college. And we spend about just over $20 million every year on remediation for students who do plan to go to college. So we've got to do something about this. Why this new assessment? We got rid of the fill in the bubble. We, we have an, an assessment that's created by over 2,000 teachers, school leaders, curriculum leads across our state and several other states who came together. And we have an assessment that really is challenging our students to critically think and actually taking less time than the old assessment we had. So as students sit down and they think about this, I wanna make sure they have good information, parents have good information, and I also wanna applaud those kids that are in, in class, that were in class two weeks ago, were in class last week, or in class this week. They've finished their assessment. We've had about almost 120,000 students who are now almost done or, or have completed the assessment. Great job, keep up the great work, and way to engage. Um, in, in school. Do you think it's the messaging? Will you maybe change how you do some outreach to students and parents to talk about these issues? I think anytime you do something new, and this was new, so um, we went from a, a paper-based test to computer. And really what we ought to be doing is applauding immensely our superintendents, our principals, our teachers who made this transition. Going from paper on to technology, this means we had to have bandwidth, we had to have computers in our classroom, we had to make sure we were ready and completely transferred. We had about 20% of our schools last year who piloted this. They did a great job. Then over 90% of our schools this year online and very few hiccups in making that transition. So exciting news, but it is new. It's new to go and transition. And the, the assessment is harder. It is harder than, than our previous assessment because we wanted to raise the bar. We're about raising expectations. That's something the governor often talks about. We hear, I mentioned our, our workforce, they're asking for higher standards, and our colleges are saying kids aren't ready when they get here, let's make sure we raise the bar. We're doing that. I think we should applaud those who are embracing that and moving forward. Many students are struggling. This is not news to you. What does the administration want to do to help those students succeed in school and be ready to pass those tests, especially if they're harder? Sometimes it's ironic to me, we spend so much time talking about an assessment, and, and by the way, I will say, not only you and I, when we were in school, we took an annual assessment, it's state and federal law, we've been taking it for decades. So it's not a new idea to measure how well we're doing. But unfortunately, that's an important conversation to have, but the real important conversation is your question. What are we gonna do about it? When our kids are struggling, how do we provide reading coaches, interventions to support them when they struggle? But the, th the key is you don't know a student is struggling until you know where they are. So you've got to have that assessment that tells you, you know what, we need to do something and tells you what to do, strengths and weaknesses. Maybe somebody's really, a student's doing really well with math but struggling in English language arts. So once you know that, you can provide those supports, interventions, extra time, and you know, after school programs, whatever it may be to help them close those gaps. I, I can tell you, um, 
I had the privilege, I have a little sister in a big brother, big sister program. And I got to sit with her mom and meet with her teacher. Her mom asked me to come. And it turned, she was, she's brilliant. Yes, I'm biased, but she's brilliant. And, uh, but she was struggling in a certain area. And how did we know she was struggling? Her teacher shared some data and information. And you know what? Then her mom was able to advocate and say, I want to tutor. So those kinds of things, you can't have that conversation if you don't know where you stand. So that next step is investing, which we are. It's the legislative session right now. We know right now, as we look at the new money that is in our state, the majority is going to education, almost 50% of it. And those dollars are being invested for interventions, supports, um, and supporting students and teachers. So big investments, that's the right investment. And the key about having a new assessment, we want a, a high bar, but we also want to do something when we don't meet that bar so we can close the gap. There's lots of critiques out there, lots of things being said. This is a hot issue. Some of those have been leveled against you personally, conflicts of interest or connections you might have. What's your response to that? When it comes to conflict of interest, I serve this state 100%. I don't receive any outside uh, funding or paychecks or anything um, for any of the uh, boards I may serve on. Uh, I think there's been some kind of question of whether I'm on Pearson's board. I am not on Pearson's board. My response is I have had a laser fo focus for the last four years and I have a laser focus for the next four years and that's making sure our kids in our state get the best possible education and that they're set up for success. I'll keep laser focused and I hope as we spend time and energy around education we spend it on our kids and their success, not about myths that may be being passed around that don't get us anywhere when it comes to outcomes for kids. What are some of your other priorities for the next couple of years? So as we look ahead, I mean a lot of conversation around this new assessment park and like I said kids coming out of classrooms going wow I like this it's cool to be on the computer it's easier than I thought that's that priority of not the test but what are we going to do about it and how are we challenging ourselves to always raise the bar and see our students succeed that will always be the number one priority student success and as measured by ready for careers which we hear a lot from employers that we're not there yet or college and we hear a lot from higher ed that we're not there yet so a continued focus on raising the bar, supporting our students and teachers, and championing successes and intervening where we're struggling, and then replicating successes. We have a program called Principals Pursuing Excellence. It's awesome. It's our top performing principals mentoring our struggling principals. And those principals that have, have participated in this program, they're seeing double the improvements of the statewide average right now. So we want to invest in supports like that that really encourage our excellent principals and, and kind of our rock stars to, to share their best practices and we want to see that across the board. In the budget this year we have um, dollars to replicate that program for teachers. So continuing to invest in key supports, championing successes, but always, always having that expectation that every child can learn and every child can be successful. Do you have plans to reach out to teachers to do some of that discussion and outreach about what the tests mean? Next year, the tests will be a bigger part of teacher evaluations. What are you going to be doing to start that conversation with teachers on the ground? So a couple things. First, I mentioned this park assessment was created by educators. 2,000, many from our state, many from other states. So the good news is those who have engaged and really gotten to be a part of this process are well equipped to speak and talk about that. And we'll see, I think, consistently that our educators are very excited about these new standards that we have, et cetera. I think the hard part is the unknown of a new assessment. And so I, I really believe once we get on the other side of this in the next couple weeks, I think folks will kind of go, okay, that wasn't, it wasn't so bad, right? And, and even thinking about the teacher evaluation, um, these results are not included in the teacher evaluation this year, but the maximum they'll be included next year is about 11.5%. So we, we were very thoughtful in transitioning to this new assessment and said we're going to do a three-year transition not just transition wholesale. There are states in the nation right now, by the way, almost all 50 states are transitioning to a new assessment. Some of them the same one we're taking and some of them are taking, they're transitioning immediately, don't have a three-year crosswalk, they don't have a crosswalk for their graduation expectations, which we do, don't have a crosswalk for school grades of three years, which we do, or their teacher evaluations. So I think we have this great opportunity to say, hey, we're bridging into this, not jumping in without preparing and making sure we've been thoughtful in advance. So as we go forward, usually I've been to almost every district in our state and I'll continue to reach out whenever I go and visit a district. I always sit down with teachers, say, what are you thinking? How's it going? 
and we'll continue to do that.